Hi. Hey, up. You okay? <laughs> Sorry, uh, I was just run over a bit we, we started talking about guitars <laughs> oh no it's all good well, I'm ever so sorry Grant but I actually just messaged you on Facebook it's been a very very long time I don't expect you to remember me I think it was uh it was the Eskimo song that was the last time we spoke oh right okay so it was all bright electric album yep uh, I think it was black country radio that's what that was a long time ago <laughs> yeah I do remember black yeah I do remember that I like that track, Eskimo. It's still one of my favourites on that record. Yeah, you know, we oh, still play it. It's so psychedelic. It's awesome. I remember yeah, playing the yeah. video to like James um, Bond. Yeah, we played it yesterday. Uh, yeah, I always thought that'd be a good Bond theme, that one. But we, um, uh, yeah, actually, we played that yesterday. You know, we got that in, we have rehearsed that one. Uh, so it's kind of in a, it's in the set as a possible song that might end up on the tour as well. Oh, good stuff. And I also, I've got to say, I remember when we did last speak, uh, you were in the shower because it was the only place you could get out of the sound check. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, you probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, look, Grant, talk to us about the new album and the, and the new single. Yeah, well, it's a double album, uh, Black Red, our first double album. Well, first official double album. We did a B-side one, but this is the first official one, yeah quite brave to have a double album but I thought after being in a band for 30 years it's nice to try something different and I've you know got all these songs and uh it's almost like this is part of like Torpedo was the previous album that was going to be a double I decided to keep it a single and there was songs left over from that plus I wrote a load more so we decided to make this the double so it's kind of like ended up being like a trilogy really <laughs> But when I say double album, I've kind of done it like two separate vinyls and two separate CDs. So you get like a little bit of a break. So it's like two standalone albums in one, very much connected. But I wanted the listener to have a bit of a break rather than just be one long player. Um, yeah, so that's it really on the album. And the single, A Lost in the Wilderness, is is it our fifth single from the, from the album? Because we've been doing a lot of double A-side singles. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's a love song. It's, it's, you know, it's still, I don't know, it's anthemic. It's sort of classic feeder, I guess. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> uh, no, absolutely with you on that one. I've always loved your new music because it's it, it, it's um, it's um always developed, I think. You've always sort of, uh, please obviously don't, you know, shoot me for saying this, but I always feel like uh, the audience has not only grown with you, but you've grown with the audience as well, as you know, as the audience has gotten older and stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, but oh, that's weird though, because it has, but... Our audience is really mixed. We've got like really young kids, and so I get people saying, "Oh, we, oh, you know, can we get them into the gigs?" They it says they have to be eighteen or some of fourteen, whatever it is, if they're with an adult. And you know, we've got a lot of really young fans that I think have discovered us through their parents and older brothers and sisters, in the same way as I got into music. And then maybe kids that have seen us at festivals. You know, obviously, you know, when we've done festivals, we've got little kids on the shoulders, and they're singing along the Worcester High, and I'm thinking. How do you know that song? That was written in the you know in like the mid nineties, and uh, some little eight year olds like singing the worst to high. So we've obviously got a new generation of fans as well as the as the diehards there that you know that have grown older with us. So that's a that's a re I think we're so lucky to have that, and I think that's a really healthy thing. Um, it may be you know it's because you know I know we rock out, but we have I think what's important with Fido and the way I write songs is there's always a lot of melody, and I think that maybe that appeals to a wide audience of well, all Grant, ages. Look, if you don't mind me asking, because, you know, I, I grew up with your music as well. Again, don't shoot me for saying that. <laughs> That's, uh, right. That's great. What's that success like now that you're 30 years into the career and you were just talking about how, you know, when you were growing up with music and, yeah. and the bands that your family introduced you to, what's it like now being that band and looking at the younger generation? Uh, this is bonkers. I don't really think about it, but it is bonkers. I mean, now I've just said that to you and now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have to admit, you know, I don't feel my age because the whole feeder journey has been, it's never really, we, 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 you know, we've never really stopped. We've always been busy and I've always been inspired. I've been quite lucky that, you know, sometimes you write that one album and then it's gone or you just can't. And I, I hope people don't feel that, feel like that about feeder because, it was a very steady climb for us. It took a long time to get to any commercial success. And, you know, people think like, oh, well, you know, unless you're all over TV or all over the you know, major big radio playlists, people think, oh, you guys still going? It's like, yeah, we've got a mat, you know, we're doing as big a shows now than we, you know, as we were like 20 years ago. But, you know, you could, look, 
it's very unless you reach that huge level, it's impossible to stay at that kind of stadium, massive arena level, unless you're in that that kind of area. But if you can stay at a decent level, which I think we've managed to do, then that then that says something. And I think that's just down to us being, you know, working hard, being consistent, but you know, being inspired still, having a great fan base that's changing. And I and you know, and I, I you know, I really can't complain about that. Sorry, I'm waffling on, but I'm trying to explain to myself as well, you know, why I'm still here doing it. And it and it must be because of that, you know, just from you know, just d- doing what we do. And look, seen you live quite a few times and you're such a great live band and also talking the success of whether it's radio and stuff, but also TV. And I am going to show you my age ever so slightly. Um, but I remember, I remember you guys being on the Bratz movie soundtrack. Oh, yeah. What was that? <laughs> well, yeah, probably. Yeah. I forget it. But I was already a fan of the band, so it wasn't even Bratz that introduced me to it. But like, you can credit Bratz. <laughs> I oh, know it's funny, isn't it? We 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 ended up in quite a few things, quite a few films and all sorts. They've used our stuff on, yeah. I mean, uh, feeding music gets used a lot on sport. Even now, we get you know we do really well with sport, and I think I can see why because we have the kind of dynamics and the anthemic bits and stuff like that. So you know you need that for sport, don't you? You know people like that and a Go good on, old. Rip. Are you more football or rugby? I'm more rugby. I'm from Wales, you know. at the but, moment, then yeah. Yeah, I mean that's why Taka does all the football stuff because he he's more into football than me. And I can, if you ask me, I wouldn't have a clue. I mean, I I, mean, I do watch football a bit, and I've been to a few games, but um, I've I I I tend to be more into rugby. But um, I do you know I do like football as well. I just I just don't know enough about it to go on the radio and sound like <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, to do the football. I'll do the rest of it. Uh, well, look, uh, just to give you a heads up as well. So that's like the, the bulk of the interview. Obviously, we're going to promote this album and promote the, the single as well. Um, but also, just to give you a heads up, uh, Easter weekend, we're doing the best of British the whole weekend. And basically, this interview is going to feature across an entire hour uh, with songs from the new album, uh, the singles, and obviously, you know, some older stuff as well. So we wanted to ask you, do you mind just choosing a couple of songs off the top of your head for the recording? Because those are the songs we'll play in between our chat of the whole show. Like you mean news? Or you mean anything from Feeder era? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, your stuff though. We're gonna go. We're gonna obviously we're gonna be playing a load of Feeder stuff, but we want you to choose the songs. Okay, all right. So you wanted me to go back to some early stuff and what? Well, can I pick and any new, new stuff? Yeah. Oh. Can we get Eskimo Funny. on? Please choose Eskimo. <laughs> yeah, all right then. Okay, would you want me to do them in one go or just do one at a time? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, just choosing at least four Feeder songs for us at the moment That's with a mix cool. of new and older. Yeah, okay, let's go. Okay, so I'll go back to the start. A song that really um well kept us in America for you. It was a it was a sort of semi-radio hit in America, which is quite a big thing for the States. Is a song called High from our first album, Polythene. I've got to put that one in first. Cool. Right in that one. Okay, down. next up, quite tricky. Uh you've only given me four. So um whew, what do I go with next? I'm probably going to go with, um, I'll go with uh, Yesterday Went Too Soon from our from the, uh, from the our second album, which was called Yesterday Went Too Soon. I picked this one because I remember, I think it might have been one of the first times we did Top of the Pops, and it was a big thing for us. Suddenly being this sort of underground indie rock band to being on mainstream TV on a show that I'd grown up with as a kid, so I picked that one. What was that like? I bet you got a story from it, surely. Bizarre. I don't know. I, I just sort of sort of just being on top of the pops and remember watching it when I was a kid with my dad and watching like Blondie and Kate Bush and stuff. Yeah, it was quite surreal. Um, quite terrifying because they always made us play live. And some of the pop acts and stuff who were on there at the same time didn't ever play live. So we were thinking, that's a bit unfair. So when people hear it at home, it, it, you know, we're going to sound like this raw live rock band. All over, yeah, And then you've got this sort of perfect pop artist next door to you who aren't playing live. So yeah, it was it was it was it was it was all a bit surreal. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Um, okay, next up, as we talked about it earlier on, I'll go with Eskimo because I think it's uh, I think it's a really interesting track, and it's actually one of my favourite feeder tracks taken from our album All Bright Electric. Come on, you've got to mention the James Bond bit in there, though. It should have been the soundtrack. Oh yeah, you yeah yeah you mentioned you thought it's yeah it does have a little bit of a Bond theme thing mm. to it doesn't it yeah well 
who knows? It's never too late. Maybe they might suddenly discover it and it gets picked up in a new Bond film. Yeah, the music video to that was epic as well. Really psychedelic. Loved it. Can I have two more? Yeah, of course you can. As many as you want. I just didn't want to keep you. You know, it's pretty difficult. We've got like 30 years. (laughs) I know. Yeah. Can you sum yourself up in five songs? Go. (laughs) All right. I'm not going to do the obvious ones because I know everyone's heard Yesterday and Buck Rogers. I'm going to go for a song which I think is one of our more timeless songs that was a really weird time after losing John, but it was a song that came after all that. And I think it's you know one of our most iconic feeder songs is called um, Just The One I'm Feeling from Comfort and Sound. It's probably our biggest radio song actually for us. Um, and it's a song that I think will always be, I think that will always be in the feeder set. Played it on Monday, by the way. I do a, a, a game on the radio called Spoken Thank Song, you. where I give you the opening lyrics of a song. You've got to tell me what it is. And it was that track on Monday and people had to guess it. And everyone got it, just so you know. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, all right, so I've so got one more, have I? Yeah, do you want to choose some of the... What about the newest single? It's up to you, whatever you want yeah. to go for. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go... Well, as it's the new single, um, I'm going to go with uh, Lost in the Wilderness. Um taken from the new album Black Red, the new double album Black Red. Very hard to pick one because there's obviously 18 tracks on there. Um, But as it's the current single, and it seems to be getting a really good reaction from people so far, um, especially the video, um, here it is, uh, Lost in the Wilderness. Oh, that's great, Grant. Thank you. And look, because it's Best of British, and I know that we're running out of time pretty quickly, I just wanted to actually talk to you a little bit about, obviously, we're uh, BFBS, the Forces Station. Am I right in thinking you've actually come here before? Yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah, I, you? yeah. I, did, yeah I came there and did, did I don't know, it might be a couple of times. I did some acoustic stuff there. Have you got any military connections? Because I always think no matter how big or small, everyone knows somebody, whether it was a great grandfather or something. Uh, well, so yeah, my yeah, I have my my um, certainly my family. I know my I know my uncle. Well, my great uncle, he was uh, he was in the some commandos. He sort of jumped out of planes and stuff and all sorts in the war, but. Um, I know our manager, uh, Matt Page. Um, he was he, he's ex army. He was he was in the tank regiment or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so so we got that connection. Uh, um, yeah, I have. I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. Yeah, I definitely have in the family. They, you know, definitely going back sort of you know first second world war period, but nothing sort of after that. Yeah, and to be fair, you're just talking about your manager, though, being uh, ex-army. Yeah. I the news yeah. recently, because you've got a cracking beard. You always have done. I've seen it longer, by the way, and your and yeah. hair longer. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I cut my, yeah, well, I've still got a little, little bit left, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've, I've sort of decided, well, I grew my hair long on my on my, on my my solo record, Yorktown Heights, again, I thought. Everyone's calling me Jesus, and I mean, because you're saying, <laughs> you're going to, you know, but anyway, yeah, so I, I just get bored, but. I might grow it again if I still can, you know, maybe one more time, but I don't know. I've just, I've accepted just the beard and the short hair now. Well, you're very <laughs> lucky though. And you'll have to talk to your uh, your manager as well. Cause uh, the big news topic this year at the moment is, are the army going to be allowed to have beards? Oh, right. Cool. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'm scared to shave mine off. Cause I, I didn't use that because in the nineties and no one really had beards. It was all very clean shaven. And I see videos where I thinking, God, and I, I did think about it. Oh, so I just shave it off and see what it looks like. So I've not actually been clean shaven for a long, long time. And I, uh, I'm, I'm just a bit scared to do it now. You can't um, do it because you've probably got a bit of a tan and then it'll look really odd. <laughs> <laughs> it might look really weird. Um, I'm not sure. I did I did give it a really close one. I thought, oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, it makes your face look a bit thinner. But uh, I, don't, I might do it one day. I don't know. But I might do it when I haven't, you know, you know maybe just before a tour isn't the best time to do it. I should have done it during lockdown. Oh, yeah, just a, a clean break or whatever. Yeah, I did think about shaving. Or I was thinking about just like shaving, you know, doing the whole crew cut and do the beard as well. But I, I yeah, decided not to. But, um, yeah, it's a lot. You know what? I mean, I mean, I think I've done it. I don't have a problem with people having beards in the army. I think, you know, I suppose maybe if it's too long, maybe it's not, you know, it's, you know, maybe that's not good if you if you're in a military situation or in combat or something, but I don't know. I mean, I'll, what are your thoughts on having beards in the army? Would you be against it? Oh, I am so pro beards. I think it looks okay. great on a man. <laughs> I do keep my beard very clean, by the way. I know there's a lot of bad rap around me, men with beards saying, oh, but I do, I do give mine a good shampoo. <laughs> oh, good, good condition as well. And look, I'll tell you it's what, actually. It's an important um, thing to do to keep your beard nice and clean. 
oh, of course. Uh, with a, you've got to have a comb. Do, does Grant Nicholas have a comb? Mine's not like quite long enough. I bet Taka has. He's got a really good. He he he's got a proper long beard here because he keeps it short here. But he's got the, he's got like the real proper long bit. Um, yeah, he can pull off. A, you know, Taka can pull off. He's always liked to be. You know, he always has a good look. He likes you know to have a you know he likes to stand out in the crowd. But he's got a very impressive beard. It come, come, come sort of comes right down here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, uh, from uh, from beards then to tattoos, if you don't mind, another news story this year, talking RAF now, they've just been allowed to have uh, tattoos on their hands. And I wanted to ask you, in, in terms of our audience getting to know you better, do you have any tattoos? I don't know. No, I haven't. <gasps> how Very, how uh, are you a rock and roll star of like 30 years well, without I, a tattoo? Hey, I, I want to be different. <laughs> I I... Listen, I really like tattoos and I have nothing against them. I just never really, I've never really spent enough time finding one that I want that much on my body. But I have thought about it. I still think about it. Yeah, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't go, you know, look crazy. But I know they're very addictive. So I know once you get one, you want another one. I've got friends who have literally gotten everywhere. Um, and I think they look amazing, you know, when they're done well. But you have, you have to really know what you want, though, because if you just get a tattoo for, for you know, for an image thing and kind of rush into it, you're kind of stuck with that, really, unless you go and have some sort of laser removal, whatever they do, which is quite a painful and quite long process, apparently. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, maybe no tattoos is the new rock and roll. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, well, look, actually, another one for you then. So, look, we've been talking about your career. We're talking over 30 years, and you've mixed with a lot of A-listers, a lot of big names. And uh, we do ask a lot of people this, but is there ever anybody you've met that you were either a little starstruck or, you know, the whole thing of you should never meet your heroes? Did anybody ever disappoint you when you met them? Oh, it's a very difficult one, that. Yeah, you might not want to share that one if someone disappointed you, but in terms of, like, uh, uh, being a starstruck. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have to admit, when we toured with you two, that was quite a big thing because you know, you two, you know, love them or hate them, they're 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 an incredible band. They've written some amazing songs and they've had an amazing career. Um, you know, and I remember we were touring with them around Europe doing football stadiums. It was they had they picked up some some really good support bands. They had like Ash, Feed Us, uh, Snow Patrol um I know, a few other bands and so we we, we did certain nights and it, i think it was us and ash some nights and anyway and i remember doing this gig and it poured with rain we got absolutely soaked and we hadn't actually met them and we were in our little dressing room and then suddenly like bono walks in and <laughs> we're all drenched just come on stage just comes to set you know sits and has a little chat with us that was quite a surreal moment yeah and I, I actually remember the conversation because um Bono, we used to wear. He was wearing, you know, those kind of what are they call is it dra crepes or drapes? You know, the kind of Teddy Boy shoes with the big soles. Yeah, yeah. Teddy boy shoes. I don't know if you remember Teddy Boys with the big. Well, Bono used to wear those quite a lot, and he walked in, and he and he said, um, "Oh God, you, you know, you guys must have, you know, you said he did a good job out there. You know, it must be awful weather for you. You know, well done." And he said, um, "You didn't fall over on stage with the rain." I said, "No, no, you know, I, I managed to not fall over." And he says, "He he said, oh, I do this thing where." I get skateboard, like grip tape, which is the tape you put on skateboards, you know, that you have to keep the grip. And he put, he, he said he used to put them on the bottom of his shoes to stop him like slipping over. And that's a conversation I had with Bono from you too. It's quite surreal, I know. But I, I'll always remember that. I know it's just weird. But yeah, to have a conversation about putting grip tape on the bottom of his shoes with somebody, you, yeah, kind of, yeah, they've been around since you were at school, you know, this pop, you know, rock star idol, you know, but he was really nice, you know, and I, and I remember doing a gig some years later that we were asked to do some charity gig that Bono's wife was involved with. And they, they had, apparently they really liked our song, Just The One Feeling that we talked about earlier on from Comfort and Sound. We went, they had like models there. They had some music. It was a big thing. And it was in Dublin. And I remember sitting next door to the edge, you know, the guitar player, both having our makeup done. <laughs> oh, that was quite a surreal moment. The edge from you two having makeup next to Grant from Vida. I mean, what do you talk yeah. about in that situation as two blokes? I don't know. I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. Um, yeah, I mean, there has been a lot. I've met loads of people over the years. I'm trying to think of a few, but I haven't really met too many that have been, you know, sort of horrible. Some people just don't want to... Um, I've met a couple of actors that were a bit standoff, but I can't remember all their... 
Uh, yeah. Not worth it's remembering, a, right? Sometimes you just get someone in the, on a bad day, you know, and they and then you think that, oh, they're horrible. But if sometimes they might have had a bad day and so something was there. Maybe they had a really bad day and you just met them at the wrong time. I don't know. But in general, most people I've met have been pretty damn, you know, nice, you know. Well, look, as a, a Welsh legend of a huge rock band, uh, got to ask this one as well. Who do you listen to if it's not your own music? Oh, my God, I spent so much time listening to this. I know it sounds weird, but I'm either I mean, I'm either writing, checking mixes, learning stuff for the live show, or and, and it's, just a, it's just a cycle. So I spent a lot of time listening to Fido. I know it sounds weird. Um, but I listen to a lot of... I listen to a lot of stuff I grew up with still as well, like classic stuff, you know, I'm a massive Tom Petty fan. I love Sabbath, you know, Zeppelin, The Police, Sex Pistols, Fleetwood Mac, ELO. Uh, I love the Eels. Um, oh, you know, I like some old school hip hop like Beastie Boys and Run DMC, Joni Mitchell, Kate Bush. Oh my God, Jeff Buckley, PJ Harvey. There's some great new bands out there as well. I mean, you know, there's so many great new bands. I mean, I love Radio Ahead. You know, I don't know, obviously not a new band. Uh, oh, my God. I mean, so many. I mean, it depends what mood I'm in, really. But I'm a real... I mean, I love Van Halen. You know, I listen to... Some of listen <laughs> to the classic Van Halen. Um, I've got a very eclectic musical, you know, taste, really. And that's probably why, you know, why Feeder sounds like it does, I guess. But... But I'm very much into songs. You know, yeah, I love songs, you know. What and about, just... like, new British artists, though, as well? Like, I'm thinking about, like, the Brit Awards coming up. You know, you've got, like, The Last Dinner Party and Ray, and I know that's more pop than it yeah, is. Yeah, Last Dinner Party. But... Yeah, actually, I only heard them the other day. They're kind of... Last Dinner Party, actually, my daughter plays them to me, or my wife got them out. Yeah, and I listened to them. I was like, oh, yeah, it's interesting. It kind of reminded me of when I... Feel, I, I, I hate to label bands, and I'm sorry if they're listening, but it's uh, kind of had little bits of ABBA in there. I don't know if I heard bits of ABBA. Quite, I don't know. I thought they were quite interesting. I mean, I don't know. I quite liked them. I thought they were, you know, quite, quite sort of, really, you know, quite a cool little sound going on there. I mean, I quite like the Wet Legs stuff because it reminds me a lot of 90s bands. You know, they're cool. I mean, I like that kind of sound. My, the, I, actually, Wet Legs stuff reminds me a bit, almost like a little bit of Elastica as well. And I, know, I used to know Donna, the guitar player, quite well. And, uh, you know, they were, they were doing really well when we were first starting out. You know what? I mean, I love a lot of '90s stuff still. I mean, I, I mean, I, I, mean, I really like Bieber Doobie. I've been into her actually from when I first heard her before she really took off. Oh, do, 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 there's so many names. I was just trying to think of them all. <laughs> no, that's great though, especially for the best of British stuff that we're doing. But uh, yeah, um, Wet Leg, I think, were, are great as well. That um, Shay's Long seemed to be everywhere for a good chunk yeah. of the weeks. Yeah, I mean, I heard some other tracks. I thought, you know, they're not just one song. They've got some other good stuff as well. But, I mean, Bieber Doobie's really good. She's got that 90s thing going on. Um, oh, God, there's so many. I'm just trying to think. I've gone blank now. I always get asked this. I can never remember names. There's so many bands out there. I'm sorry uh, to put you on the spot, dude. And that's all right. I'm in the sort of feeder tour world. So, I mean, this sort of, I mean, everything feeder world at the moment. I mean, that well, bubble of, you know. <laughs> look, I am so grateful for your time. Let me distract you with one last question then, and then I'll let you get back to work. Okay. Bit of a random one, but party trick. Do you have one? If yes, what is it? And can you do it now? <laughs> no, I'm terrible. I'm most, I'm, I sound very boring, don't I? No, uh, I'm putting I'm you on the spot. I, do I have a party trick? I uh, No, not really. I tell you one thing, I can't I think I do it now. I do this thing sometimes where, where <laughs> it's not even a party trick, but my mate gets freaked out by my friend Nils. It's like I do this thing where if I really... I don't know if you can do it, but you, you know, if you really like rub your eyes, do you know do that? I tell you, I don't know. You, you know, your eyelids like, like get stuck in there and they get. Oh, well, like you your flip eyes. your eyelids. It's almost like the kind of loose skin of your eyes. And, I, and it's not just I'm getting older, I could do it when I was younger as well. <laughs> if I really rub my eyes side, but sometimes I get my eye, my eyes just, you know, to sort of stay in there and it just looks really weird. So that's my party trick. <laughs> that, that's the only one I can think of. Oh, try it one more time for us, and then I'll let you go. Come on, let's do it. Work. I think I need to be. I think I need to be warm. Is it dinner? Oh yeah, look. Oh, ah! <laughs> look, it makes me look like I'm wearing mascara. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird. Well, uh, 
Grant, I hope I hope you thoroughly enjoyed <laughs> this interview that. with how random it was. I'm so that's going to terrify everyone. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Where are you in the world, by the way? I can't. I don't know. I'm in my kitchen. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I'm not in the I, I, I'm not in the shower or the toilet at this time. You know the actor Shane. Oh, you know the guy. He was, you know, he, he uh, started off in, you know, Love Joy. What's his name? Shane. He I lives not. I can only hear it's Shane McGowan when I hear Shane. Yeah, yeah, you know the, you know the actor. Yeah, hang on. So we say Love Joy. Yeah. I'll have a look. Hang on. He's in. He's he's also in. Um, you know, John Wick, isn't he? And all that. Uh, he's in that film with Vina Keller Reeves and all that. You know the guy. Oh, he's he loves Shane. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah my oh, friend God, thinks yeah, I look of course, like Ian McShane. Yeah, Ian my friend like, thinks um... I look like I think I look like him. <laughs> <laughs> I, shall... I, say that I think he looks a little bit like um, Engelbert Humpledink. <laughs> right, right, Humpledink, okay. I could never say it. Don't you think? Uh, did I haven't really thought about it. Or maybe on that picture. Yeah, he... on, that, on that picture. Sorry, I had to interview him about Eurovision the other week, Engelbert. <laughs> He's a really good actor. In fact, his daughter lives just around here. And she, I, I think my wife knows her a bit. <laughs> I love that. So we've got a lookalike situation going on. There we go. Well, yeah. So, so maybe I could be like a, you know, I could be like a body double for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, look, Grant, I'm really sorry. I've just seen the time. Before I let you go, have you got a message to the troops? Yeah, oh, God, yeah, that's a hard one. Just look, well, obviously, you know, you know, check out some new feed of music, you know, thinking of you guys and, you know, just you know keep safe cool thank you so much and i'm so sorry for taking up so much of your time i did drop you a message on facebook like i said i know we're friends on there and haven't spoken in years so i'm really sorry but it's so good to speak to you again i love you now because i remember I, 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 I have i think i have sent you a few messages here and there so yeah i, I do remember it now you know really clearly now and i actually remember your face as well oh i haven't changed that much yeah <laughs> just don't remember mine with my eye trick <laughs> I was gonna say no. I don't even think I could do that. But I am um, when I rub my eyes, I go squeaky. If you get if you get sort of hot and you rub your eyes, it's actually easier to do than you think. But I don't know, maybe I've just got weird eyelids or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much. Honestly, please enjoy. Oh, happy Friday as well. Enjoy the weekend. And uh, I think the last message I sent to you before that was catch you in Birmingham at some point. So I'm sure I'll see you around. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the Birmingham gig sold out or almost sold out. It's literally like I think when I looked last, there was about five tickets left. I think it might have gone, but. Yeah, come it's and see right. us. I work, I work in London now, so I'll come and oh, see I'll you. Wait, I'll, I, don't, I can still get you in. Don't worry about that. Oh, that would be in. wicked. That would be wicked. Yeah, and also, fun. my mate, uh, this is Soundcheck. He always comes to your gigs to photograph. Glenn, this is Soundcheck. Oh, right. Okay, cool, yeah. If, if not, you know, we're doing the roundhouse as well. So if you want to come to any shows, let us know. Oh, that would be wicked. Look, I'll let you go. Thank you so, so oh, much. Pleasure. See you later. Bye. 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 See ya.